We moved to Mexico about three years ago and there were plenty of things we knew we were going to miss, like for example, friends and family. But these are the things that we never expected to miss. The first thing I now miss are baths. Growing up, I had a bathtub in every single place that I've ever lived and just about every house or apartment that I ever went into had a bathtub. So it was one thing I didn't anticipate wouldn't be so common in Mexico, but it's totally not. In the three years we've been living in this country across many, many different states and dozens upon dozens of cities, we've run across maybe two or three bathtubs total. And that's when we are seeking them out because I really enjoy taking baths with Epsom salts, but in Mexico, they're just not common at all. Another thing I really miss living in Mexico is consistent water pressure. Maybe we would have better luck if we had a permanent home and could work on it ourselves, but jumping from Airbnb to Airbnb, we have had a consistent lack of water pressure throughout Mexico. And when we go back to the US and have a nice shower, it just reminds me like, oh, I missed this. And just to give you a little bit of insight as to why this might be, granted, I am no plumbing expert, so I don't know exactly how this works everywhere, but the way I understand it is in the US, you're getting your water from like a main city supply. And so you can kind of manipulate the amount of water that's coming through the pipes for your showers, which is why you can get more water pressure, whereas in Mexico, they often have these very, very big containers that are like on top of the roof. So the water pressure that you're getting is just gravity. It's just gravity that's dropping that water from the container to the piping and for your shower. So it's never going to be all that much unless there's some type of pump system that's pushing it through, which in our experience is pretty rare. By the way, if you're new here, my name is Maddie. This is Jordan. Together we are Tangerine Travels. If you want to see more videos like this, hit that subscribe button. The next thing I really miss since moving to Mexico is bath mats. <laughs> you and your baths. <laughs> it's, but it doesn't have to do with baths, obviously, because there aren't that many baths. I know this is something you could very easily go out and buy at a store in Mexico. I'm not saying they don't exist, but for the vast majority of rentals that we are staying in, there's no type of fabric piece there that's meant to absorb the water when you're getting out of a yeah, the shower. True. And it's a big deal because I've almost killed myself numerous times by stepping out and it's wet all over the floor and then you just go flying. So <laughs> it's just one of those little random things, but I do miss those. <laughs> like that cucaracha time? Oh yes, like the cucaracha time in Guadalajara where I fled the bath, the, I fled the shower and oh my gosh, I just went flying in the air, thudded to the ground. <laughs> I had scrapes and bruises all over I'm me. I'm surprised you didn't break a bone Honestly, that day. I'm surprised I didn't get a concussion and die or something. <laughs> like it was really bad. Something else I didn't expect to miss when moving to Mexico are vacuums. Seriously, nobody has a vacuum and I hate cleaning. I'm the last person who wants to clean, but when I do, I want a vacuum and they just don't really exist here. Yeah, with this one, again, it's not something you can't go buy, but for us, we're traveling from rental to rental. It doesn't make sense to travel with a vacuum everywhere or buy one at every new place that we go to. But yeah, I too really love vacuums for cleaning and it makes it so much easier getting pet hair and everything but you just don't really find them. It's so, so, so uncommon in Mexico. The lack of vacuums that could potentially be because of another thing that I really miss in Mexico, which is carpet. I just grew up having carpet. I like it because I do a lot of stretching. I like doing yoga and like watching movies on the floor and stuff that's not very comfortable on tile, but you rarely find carpet in Mexico. Uh, it's very, most often tile and sometimes people have rugs, but maybe that's also why vacuums aren't very common because vacuums are typically used to, you know, clean up carpet. You can't really sweep uh, a carpet. And I miss carpet because I love the feeling of soft carpet underneath my bare feet. It feels amazing. One thing I really miss living in Mexico is comfortable furniture and specifically a comfortable couch. When I went to purchase my last couch, I seriously sat on like 150 of them until I found the perfect one. And it and was <laughs> perfect. That's probably my favorite couch ever is the one you bought for our I condo. know. We could both relax on it and last it could be relaxing on it with us and it was so soft it was one of those things you sit on and never want to get up from oh, so I've true. never found anything like that in Mexico yeah while we've been traveling a lot of the times it's makeshift furniture so like people will make it out of pallets or something and then put cushions on top or sometimes even like a individual mattress is the couch so you don't have anything comfortable to lean back up into or sometimes it's just like chairs in the living room and there's no couch at all and a lot of times there is a couch however it's just not that comfortable 
or it only fits comfortably like one person, not both of us, uh, not both of us and Laska. So I know this is like first world problems, but <laughs> oh, yeah, totally I, I do miss nice couches. <laughs> the next thing I really miss is having a washer in the home. <laughs> I used to do my laundry, used to wash it and hang it to dry and I never considered that a luxury. In fact, I would have said that taking your laundry somewhere for somebody else to wash it, dry it, and fold it, that was the luxury, and that's what we mm -hmm. do here in Mexico. And I actually really like having that full service laundry be uh, relatively affordable. Mm -hmm. It um, is. It's but we've had a handful of instances that make you like really not want to bring your clothes to lavanderias anymore. Yeah, so I mean, the obvious is sometimes clothes get misplaced or stolen. This has happened to me stolen. before. <laughs> <laughs> okay, misplaced or stolen. I mean, because it's like you want to give them the benefit of the doubt. Maybe it got mixed into somebody else's, but when half my underwear go missing, that doesn't seem like an accident. Or like another time, I got all of my undies back and they were tied into a knot. Like, a tight knot, too. So they were all stretched out and weird, like, why are they handling my underwear so much? Then recently, we took our clothes and they came back and every single piece of clothes was labeled Maddie. In all marker. of them, in, in permanent marker, even Jordans. Now all your boxers, your shirts, your shorts, everything. Every everything is labeled thing. Maddie. So, I mean, it's one of those things that is not a huge deal, but it's kind of like WTF. I would have liked if you told me you were gonna mark up all my crap before uh -huh. you did it, you know? So, uh, so yeah, ultimately I do miss having a washer at home so that I can do my own laundry. <laughs> One thing we don't have to miss when living in Mexico is our favorite shows. With a VPN, it allows us to locate ourselves in another country, so if we want to watch a show that's only available in the U.S., whether that's on Amazon Prime, on Netflix, on Hulu, something like that, we change our location with the VPN to the United States and then access that website, which gives us access to our favorite shows or the U.S. library of Netflix. If you would like to check out our favorite VPN, you can head over to tangerinevpn.com. That's our affiliate link, and it will take you right there. They're running a promo right now where you get 83% off plus three extra months free. It's a great product and we highly recommend it. It's tangerinevpn.com. Something else I didn't expect to miss living in Mexico is being able to pay with a card anywhere I go. In the US, everywhere accepts a card. And if they don't, if they're one of the rare, rare places that doesn't, they have a giant billboard at the cash register that's like, well, cash only, no cards accepted, something like that. But it's it's nice to have that convenience of being able to pay with a card, not have to, to have cash on you all the time. Sometimes it's kind of just a pain in the butt to have to ask, can I pay with card here? And even restaurants where we've been to before that say that you can pay with a card, sometimes we'll go back thinking that we don't need to have cash and all of a sudden it's cash only that day. So I also miss that convenience of just not even having to think about it, but handing a credit card, any type of credit card too, and not just Visa or MasterCard wherever we want to shop. <laughs> and paying with a card everywhere makes accounting way easier. Our accountants hate us because of all the cash transactions. And then also travel credit cards give you so many rewards, but you don't get those rewards if you don't use the card. So uh, that's something else that kind of sucks about it too. So of course there's a whole long list of products that we now miss in Mexico that we can't find here. Like Jordan's mentioned before, he really loves licorice and can't find the good stuff here. Another one that we thought of recently was q-tips that aren't made of plastic and i know that's like the seemingly the most insignificant thing but they're all made with plastic on the middle which is too bendy and they're just total bullshit they don't work as well <laughs> as the ones with paper the paper on the middle uh, a while back we got what basically was one of those big lifetime supply boxes and used it all up and then went to go look for them recently and it's like uh and on this one, you might be thinking, okay, so you can't find your favorite Q-tips in a grocery store. Well, why don't you just buy them online? And it's not to say that you can't buy things online in Mexico. Mm -hmm. There is Amazon Mexico. There's Mercado Libre. But compared to how easy it was for us in the U.S. to get, like, Amazon Prime two-day shipping, overnight uh -huh. shipping, and, like, free shipping on everything, it's so easy to order things online. Here in Mexico, that's something we miss. It's a lot more clunky and you can't always find the things you're looking for online, and at least not easily. 
And the one, a lot of those things are available online, like Q-tips, yeah, you can order those, but something you might pay $4 for in the U.S. might run you $12 or $15. So it's just not worth it. Another thing we've come to really miss while traveling around Mexico is the availability of information online. I remember in the U.S., anything that you ever needed, you could find the businesses website, their their social media, hours, and all this information was up to date, whereas here in Mexico, that's often not the case. Sometimes you're lucky if a business that you're looking up has a Facebook, and you're lucky if that Facebook has up-to-date information. If you're looking up a restaurant, it's, it's pretty common that the hours aren't going to be correct, especially now that we're in COVID times. I mean, forget it. <laughs> but that's definitely kind of a informational luxury that I, I do miss. Something else I miss about living in Mexico is peace and quiet. There are so many noises across Mexico, and sometimes I just want some calm, some tranquility away from all the noises. We've talked about this before, the chorus, the symphony of sounds in Mexico. If, any, if you've ever visited here or lived here, you know that that's true. We've even heard, though, that the opposite is a culture shock, sort of, for people coming from Mexico to the U.S., mm -hmm. that it's so quiet that they can't even sleep, that they kind of feel weirded out because there's no noise by comparison. <laughs> Something I really miss when living in Mexico is a consistently comfy bed. A lot of the places we're staying in, I'd rather sleep on this tree <laughs> than in that bed. One time we ended up sleeping on the floor because the bed was just that uncomfortable. Sleeping on the floor when we had previously found a scorpion on that floor, but that was still a better option than sleeping on what was essentially like iron springs with a blanket over top of it. <laughs> now this isn't to say that nice bedding and nice mattresses don't exist in Mexico, but us, when we're generally hopping from Airbnb to Airbnb, these are things that most Airbnb hosts skimp on. They don't spend much money on their mattresses and bedding and whatnot and just makes for not the best stay. Even if we're staying at a place long term, like one to two years, are we gonna go out and buy a new mattress for the place? Absolutely not. So this is definitely something we miss. Another thing I miss is a well-stocked kitchen. When we're going mm -hmm. from rental to rental, they generally have the absolute basics. And a lot of times if it's like the pots and pans and stuff or scratch to hell, the mugs are cracked, like it's not the <laughs> yeah. greatest stuff. Obviously, if we had a long-term place, we would buy our own uh, mm -hmm. nice appliances yeah, sure. and nice like cutlery sets and everything, but that is definitely something I miss because I used to cook a lot. And when we're in our basic Airbnb, there's not all the things there for us to do that. In yeah, fact, and for example, like when was the last time you saw a waffle maker? Yeah, never. <laughs> I don't think Mexicans <laughs> make waffles. <laughs> Something we didn't expect to miss when moving to Mexico was being able to speak our native tongue. I would not go back on learning Spanish. Learning another language has oh been gosh. really fulfilling for the both of us. So true. However, sometimes you just want to speak in English. I really took for granted how easy it is to make friends with people in English. <laughs> when, when you both speak the same when you, language? When you both speak the same language, when, yeah. When you compare that to trying to make friends with someone when you don't really speak each other's language, it's a night and day comparison. Yeah, and also, I mean, I'm so thankful for the Mexican people and how patient and loving and kind and welcoming they are of us, even when we're butchering the language sometimes. And people will totally be friends with us, even when both of us aren't really like fully communicating, which I think mm -hmm. is super awesome. But yes, I, I definitely miss the ease of speaking English, my native tongue. I miss it sometimes. Before you go, hit that subscribe button and... Gong that bell! On the screen here, we have four different videos for you to watch, including a playlist of all the videos we've made in Oaxaca. So click one of those videos so you can keep watching until we release our next video on Saturday.